didn't make a mistake. I'd probably get caught at it. But I'm not gonna do, no, do my best here. The Lord's help me. We'll make it through it. I've made a few notes because my memory's not as good as it used to be. But I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I spent the first six years of my military career in the Marine Corps. I was a little different for And I spent 20 in what we consider the Army. And I retired. I had one year National Guard, too. And I enjoyed it. But I'm not going to tell you. Some of us a little bit on the challenging side, especially for our side. Amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little things in the Army, too. It's pretty challenging, too. I still don't like Navy ships. Well, I'm telling you, first morning I ever woke up on a Navy ship, you know, the Marines go with the Navy everywhere they go. We have to go. That's kind of dirty way to put it. But pretty sure the Marines are Navy Guards and we and that Marine Guard will have doctors of the Navy because all that from Marine Corps, so it's a picky deep situation. But first morning I woke up, I was off the state of North Carolina North Carolina. My L S D a landing ship. Walked over in that ship and I couldn't see no land. I had a very good feeling somebody grew up on the back of the South Carolina. Never had too much to do with water. But then a pen got through the water and I got to think. Now put a nail in the water, it's going to go to the bottom. This ship's made out of steel and you go to the shark cut through the water. And I ain't had my breath, he might be one too. That wasn't a very good feeling. A lot of people might think that's a good one. Folks, that's the truth. That's exactly what I thought. But that Navy ship, when it dropped us off on an island down somewhere close to South America, I left. I will say one thing when that Navy ship come back and get us, it was pretty good looking piece of metal floating around out there in the meeting. But veterans, I know I'm up here talking about that, not my own experiences and everything. Veterans Day, it was signed into law on Armistice Day. 1919 by President Woodrow Wilson as a day to remember veterans. It's been around for a good while. And they've got a lot of veterans. Now, Armistice Day was uh, the reason it was signed in on Armistice Day. That was a year, probably a year after the end of World War I. I ain't got no World War I veteran senior hat. I didn't think so. And, uh, the reason it took a year was to try to get the treaty that everyone would sign. Now, there was a lot of people that didn't want to go in the World War I, but they were working on an unknown fact out there that a lot of people don't realize, too. There was a treaty between Mexico and Germany that if we committed all our forces, they would have Mexico would attack the United States. But somewhere or another, we didn't commit that many forces, so Mexico didn't attack. I'm fact that most people don't realize. A lot of times we do things that our military people don't realize. It's like World War II. People didn't want you to go to World War II. Japan was sitting there waiting for us to go. I guess they got tired and decided to go ahead and attack them anyway. But that's all in the past. Now, there's a couple things in order to qualify to be a veteran. You have to do military service to include the National Guard or an unactive red reserve during a military conflict. So that could be a war, it could be a police action, just a uh, conflict. And it had to be awarded to you on orders. Everything you get in the military is about going to have a set of orders attached to it some way to shake your hands at home. I used to have to my desk about that high. I'd about once a year, I'd push them in the trash can and start over. You know, people, they will make a copy and send you another copy somewhere down the road. Believe the military doesn't believe in paperwork. They told us we got computers, but going to do away with paperwork. Yeah, they just added on to it. But veterans day is pretty special to me. I said I had six in the Marine Corps and 20 in the Army. I wear three National Defense Service Medal. 
That means I've served in the military during three conflicts in the military chain. Everyone on active duty, where one of you here, I want to say about 99% of you, at least probably 100% of you got a National Defense Service Medal. You might not recognize it, but if you look on the D214, that's in Renji B-22 for the National Guard. You'll probably find it listed on there. Now, we don't have as many standing people in the military as we used to have. You know, we've had over 40 million people to serve in a conflict since the <coughs> beginning of World War I. We've only lost 439,000. That's a lot of people. But these people put that uniform on. Or basically make a mistake to do this. Mess with us, we'll fight you. And so far, we've always won. From the cold, freezing weather of Norway all the way to the hot, steamy climates of Vietnam, we put troops there and they did the job. We always will. Right now, we only have around 3 million people in the military. And that's including the National Guard and Reserves. Sound like a big number. It gets smaller, sound like the better area. That smaller branch is the Marine Corps. The largest branch is the Army. Except the big large branch in the military is the National Guard. And then your reserves. How many people in here were drafted? But most of the ones who were here volunteered. I did. Got out of high school, got me a job doing parking work. Get paid on Friday, come Monday, you broke. You know, that didn't make you feel very good. A friend of mine, me and him, was talking together at school together while we did something different. So it was thought it was pretty tough. I guess in the way it worked. Or at least we found out that we weren't too tough. We went down to our hometown and joined the Marine Corps. November 6, 1972, 4 o'clock in the morning, reported in the Paris Island Marine Corps death. Uh, 13 weeks later, I left. Been back and go ten to go. It was a good place to visit, but I wasn't want to live there. <laughs> but I enjoyed my time in the Marine Corps. I did things I've never seen, never done, ever seen no other way. And most veterans in here probably feel the same way. How many veterans in here didn't go to see? You didn't go to see did you? What branch were you in? Unusual. But that was a specialized job. Sir, yeah. Dave, yeah. That's another thing, too, there, but when you're talking about the military, we got all kinds of jobs in there. It's a good skill. A woman told me one time, and I was like, I said, I've recruited them 17 years for the National Guard. I covered mainly Anson and Union County. Started out standing in Anson County. <coughs> People over in Stanley County look at different. They're not bad people, they just, I don't know why that's good, it's a little different over there. That's why I took the wheel and dig in front of the boss man that I would work real hard to get the answer to Union County. He did. And I stayed here for 17 years. You know, been a recruiter to death since in the military. It's like we're going to meet me in the military post and pool. Recruiters. The pressure is that great. The pressure in recruiting is so great on recruiters that they pay you additional money. They, when I retired, I was getting about four hundred and thirty dollars a month above anyone else in the military for all the job I did. And I don't know how many of you really know that hours the Marine makes that a recruiter's work. 
Now, you have to get them to go to work till I want to do it. You have to have to go home till I want to do it. I didn't have a supervisor. But you had a number every month that you better make. If not, they were way easier that you would make. I worked three months without a day off one day. That worked because of my not getting enough number. That was the way it was in, in recruiting. I was going to work most times out of 8 o'clock in the morning. And sometimes it would be 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning for what's going on. A lot of mornings after you had a bed, 4 o'clock go. If you have a man have to take a pill, you have to get up around 4 o'clock in the morning and get him to get the sharp. Get the military entry processing station. And you had to be there by 6 o'clock. One minute after, they would lock the doors. And it weren't like what they had unlocked the door for you if you were a minute late. They just blacked it and did it. One thing about the military, the first straight up as far as time goes. It's, it's kind of hard to stand here and tell you everything that I'd like to tell you in time. In fact, it would be a lot of it. But that's my soul to preach. If I get to talking too much, you just tell me, shut up. I'm going back over and sit down. <laughs> This is not that difficult compared to standing up in a church talking to people in front of preachers, the deacons, Sunday school teachers. <coughs> but this is it's different. I really appreciate the opportunity to have me But I talk all the time. Thank you. People that know me now, I used to talk that much, but when I got into recruiting, I found that's the only way it worked for me. You talk to people all the time. Some of them going to say something they want to hear. That helps. And I still do that. I stopped in the deep store to get me a cup of coffee. That poor young lady taking that money. Like I told one of the other dads, you know, you can try to find ways to get the Word of God in there. The other one, and I just love walking into the big store and rocket in. Asked him what he had to do, and she said, Fine. I said, Well, I'm not. She said, Well, I said, Perhaps you'd like to have me face every morning here. <laughs> <laughs> and I stopped and looked at me and thought for a minute, I said, yeah. <laughs> you know, you women are really good at running the cash register. I said, you know about any just about anywhere you go, you see the women's always taking the money. He <laughs> said, yeah, I said, yeah, y'all used to taking their money, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> then you leave and get back in with a joke. See, when I get to talking to somebody like that at the door, I know. Go to church, anger. We're chewing you guys. Oh, you know, I'm a retired correction officer, too, and I am. You know, you might want to think about it. You know, I just you know it's a whole lot easier to. Uh, I see young people in church. I saw them see them out there on the street. Because I used to see them behind the bottom of the bars around the street. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but I like to talk to them. That's just some things I do, so I God bless me but alone too. One of them might not think so. But sometimes I do talk too much, sometimes I shut up though. You see, you know, tired men though. Sometimes it's a good thing just to keep quiet. It's not always easy, but sometimes it's a good thing. But now I'll say a few more things too, and then I won't too far. I'm going to say something now that I think we all need to really understand that can affect young people's lives. How many of you young people in here between 18 and 35? Let's see a show of hands. Male and female. How many have signed up for selective service? According to the federal law, you got to. You know what happens if you don't sign up for selective service? By law, you're not supposed to be able to go to any state support school. By law, you're not. You can't draw on the floor. That's just two of the things. Now, it's not no big deal to sign up for select service. It ain't. It's not the draft. So to speak. But what it is, it's a pool of people that if you ever go into a war and believe we've got the numbers and what it is. You don't think the government's got your number where you live at. They already got you. <laughs> <laughs> that 
I don't remember anticipate us having to get into another war where we're going to have to worry about starting the draft. But we can fight China and both that thing without having to start the draft. Because we have a lot of National Guard and a lot of reserves out there, too. And our military is legal tech. But we also got unacted ready Unacted ready reserves is probably the biggest all our military can get. What that is, that everybody that goes in the military signs a contract. If you go in and you sign two years, until 1989, everybody that joined the military signed a six-year contract. After that, it went eight. Now, your contract is broken down into different. You might serve before 89, you might serve two years active duty and four on that. After that, it changed. Now, eight. But you, you serve those two years, and at the end of that, you put none that you really deserve. You're not in the military, but you are in the military. You just said, stand right over here and we need you, but we're going to call you back. That's basically what it is. You think of all the people that's got out in the past 10 years out of the military. We don't have to begin. Oh, I, no, but let's say the last eight years anyway. Most of them are not you ready to serve. What are they? Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps. And now Space Force. Know too much about Space Force yet. First year we're gonna find that back. But these people can do basic training. They've been so we've been to the division training. They got to be a loop of whatever. Their different branches call it different things. They already train. All they gotta do is go to come on. And buy it off. You got you got to know everything you got about it. I don't have many people in here that's ever fought in a war. War's not a pretty thing. <clears throat> but I'm telling you, if it comes down to going out here and fighting for this country, <coughs> I got an old AR-15 and a half thing in the city. It's about as close as I get. And I still know how to use it. So where else can we get? Come on, I'm telling you. This is just, it, it's so crazy. How all you people have been in the military, you've been outside the country, most of you, right? You've seen the living conditions of people in other countries. We throw away more than other countries even have. Mm -hmm. This stuff you see on TV of kids running up and down the street with hardly no clothes on, living in tin shacks or cardboard shacks, it ain't that far off the coast of the United States. I know most of you heard of St. Thomas, Puerto Rico. We pulled in there on Liberty when, one day, and uh, that's a big tourist resort down there. Supposed to be one of the nicest, beautiful places in the world. <coughs> Ain't got a deep harbor, so we had to get a bus to get to the something I can put out. Beautiful bus. It's a nice bar, a big, nice hotel, and gambling and all this stuff. They had some. Other things going on around there today. There's more things going on there. But you walk 100 yards in the land from that. That's hungry kids. You gotta get to me. Sometimes I don't know why I have food. Sometimes I wonder maybe we just have forgot about God in places like that. Because God's everywhere. No doubt in my mind about that. But when you see people live in that kind of environment and all this money out there and people walking around drinking and having a good time. Oh, I walked in one of the I'm not saying I was an angel when I was a Marine either. And there was some pretty nice people in there, I thought. Matter of fact, I reached in my pocket and pulled out a money of papers. I went and started to walk off this man, tapped me on the shoulder, said, That's your money, Marine? Check the pocket, it was. I'd lost all my money, had a bigger hand. 
good people in their own way. But just like we got problems in this country too, are we forgetting the people? I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's working. <laughs> I forget what I was going to say that. <laughs> yeah, we walk around. So we are. We're not famous as the people right here. Are. God's house, God's people. We all get it right. Every one of us. And we should be so lucky to be here. I'm proud to see you. <clears throat> what about that? Uh, Young man out there leaning the ditch on drugs. Look, I changed him this morning. What about that young lady out there? Well, we pretty much know what she's doing. I scared you. You said something last week. People, you better stop me that. I'm just waiting to tell you the same way I know how to. So I'm not talking about it. I took drug classes when I was in group. They'd get me into high school to talk to young people. And I've learned a lot from talking to young people. Your young grandchildren, your children. Now, you can sit here and tell me, hey, my kids don't mess with drugs. My kids don't mess with drugs. My kids don't do that. These glasses don't allow me to see the sea so far, and I don't think yours does too. And I'm not saying nothing about any, any of your children. But the thing we better think about, that's a pretty young lady right there. Pretty young lady. You know, that young lady's going to be facing in the next few years in school. People try to get her to use drugs and everything else. You know, let me tell you something, Jeremy. I think you're a pretty young lady, but you know there's drugs out there right now. First time you use it, you're going to get hooked up. You know what's going to do to you the rest of your life? You ain't going to have a life. I'd rather see anyone go out here and join the Marine Corps. Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine Corps to be out here strung out on drugs. <clears throat> we don't have too much drugs in the military. Go on in order for a person to get in, they got to take a drug test and start. That's the first thing. That's before they get sworn in. They're not in, but they get sworn in. They fail that drug test. You're going home, but not bad to have them. People say, I don't mess with drugs. They can beat the drug test, you don't beat the drug test. Not like the one the military's got. But you're going to be facing a lot of things out there. You're going to be facing a lot of pressure, young lady. Now, I can stand up here and cover that. How many of us are going to go out here and do something about it? How many, many of us are going to talk to people about the same thing? Hey, we old, we're supposed to have wisdom, aren't we? All right, I got one more thing, and I'm going to shut up. I know you get tired of listening to me. But I want to thank you, every one of you, not for just having you here today, but for my 26 years of being in the military and you paying taxes so I could eat beans and have books. You know, without me paying taxes, but none of that stuff don't work. Appreciate it, but hope I didn't embarrass anybody or hurt anybody's feelings if I did a box.